Okay guys, so in this video we have added support to actually look at an email. So let's, let's just have a look at that. So if I click this email link here now, we see that we have a new page where we have our subject and a from and a to part here and a bit of a date and then we can view, like we can just look at the text that is inside of the email. And yeah, that's basically all the functionality that we needed. So let's look at the code. So first and foremost, we see here that we've added a new endpoint to our application, which is just going to be git, like the, a specific email. And all we do is that we grab the email ID from the parameters, and then we have a service where we simply get the email and then we return it. Simple and fairly straightforward, I hope. And then we've added this thing here. So now we've added a from field to our email schema. And the reason why we do that is because originally we didn't, you know, we only had a recipient or someone who is going to receive our email or a list rather of those things. But now we also want to show who something came from because when reviewing an email, it's not necessarily we, are, you know, the user who made it. I mean, it could be an incoming email as well. And for now, we're just going to default to me at fmail.com and just keep it as, as that because we haven't really decided on this the way that we are going to handle like user accounts and stuff of that nature. So this is just a hard coded value or a default value for now. And then we have our email service, which just got this single little function here called get email, which is just going to find an email by find by ID. And of course, we've added some updates to our unit tests for the model and also in some updates to our to the unit test for the service. And then I've made some slight modifications, like we have a few font sizes that have changed and I've added a few variables and so forth, like just for the CSS, but nothing like nothing major where there might be a few renames here and there. And yeah. That's uh, and then we kind of moved our email into and like originally it was just a component, but now it's in a container. I'll now show you why in just a moment. So here we have our email. We'll actually look at the whole file here because there's quite a few things that to cover here. So we store our email on the state, and when the component mounts, we simply grab the email ID from the props, which are passed in through the container, which we'll see just in in just a moment. And then we make a fetch call to our emails endpoint, we grab the response, we parse it into an email, and then we pass the incoming email into an email view model, which is just responsible for, we can actually look at that immediately. This, this function is just responsible for taking the incoming email and extracting out the information that is relevant to our view. And as we can see here, like I've refactored a little bit, so the format timestamp function that was originally just in the in, in the uh, inbox email model which we have here is now as you see here it originally was here but now I've moved that out into a separate package so because we need to reuse that functionality between this view and this email view basically and then it does very a very similar thing. It's going to just grab the timestamp and the recipients and try to format these things in a nice way. And if it can't, it's going to log out a warning. And then finally, we see here that we will replace all our new lines in the body of the of the email with the breakpoints instead, so that we can still like render breakpoints or like new lines. And yeah, that's about it. And then. This part here is a little bit relevant as well. This is just basic styling and markup and so forth. But in this is what we want to do if we want to render out the body's actual break. Like because by default, React is going to escape any type of HTML that gets injected, like added to a string for them. And that's simply because it's possible for an attacker to produce an email which is going to compromise our application. So you could, in theory, create a HTML document inside of your email body and then send that to somebody. And if the, our application doesn't escape that, the user is actually going to 
possibly be ex be exploited or be attacked in somehow from a hacker. Now the way that we store emails is through Mongo, so it's already escaping these things by default. So this is it's a bit naive, but it's safe for our purposes since we don't like if we wanted to do this in the correct manner, we would have to put quite more quite a quite a lot more time and effort into escaping the content of the body. But for now this is fine for us. And then we have the email container, which is fairly small, where we simply go and grab this thing here, the match, which is basically coming from the router of the application. We can actually just look at that for just a second here. So the way that this works is that when a user gets to this route here, because we are doing, in order for you to get to the email, uh, like this page, we actually do a redirect, and that redirect can, uh, is in the URL there, we are actually specifying the email ID, and that's what you're seeing here. So basically, the match object is something that's being passed in to our email component, and that's simply React Router's uh, interface for what's been matched in the URL. And then I basically just grab from that object the params and the email ID, and then we pass that in as we saw earlier. And then we have an on error, so if something goes wrong, we simply show an error, and yeah, that's about it, really. And did, 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 what else has changed? Yeah, we have some new stylings, added a few basic tests for e the email view. And yeah, that's about it. And I also had a little bit of a look, as I mentioned in the last video, a few renames here and there. And just to, to add a little bit of extra security to our inbox row icons component here, I added this part here. We can actually look at this as well, where I've moved out, as you can see here, the inbox row and the inbox row icons into their separate directories and put them in the components directory and so forth, just to structure things a little bit. And this is just, I, and as I said, I just added a bit of error handling. So if you try to click the imported button and something goes wrong, you still see and you know you get an error of some sort. So just a little bit of uh, like error handling for uh, for our inbox uh, or either for our inbox row icons. And yeah, that's about it. So now we are ready to move our card. So now we can read an email, which is awesome. And I've restructured the backlog a little bit and added a few things that came to mind as I was working. So now we want to add support to show number, uh, show a number before the email category, so you know how many unread emails you have. In, but that also means that now we need to introduce the concept of okay, we need to be able to read, I like, could to specify and a email that we should be able to read. And that kind of brings us to this question here. If we now need to specify emails that we have read, it doesn't really make sense that we have that sort of feature for sent emails. So now we have a few things to consider here. Is it more important for us? Like, Can we even start on this before we have support for showing what's in like, basically inbox email emails? And I would think, think that maybe not. Maybe this is actually the way to go and we kind of have to do this. Because we need to have an email to read from somebody else in order to mark it as read and in order for us to be able to show a number before the email category, we might need to know, you know, because the intention of this uh, this number that you've seen in, in in Gmail, if you use it, is just to indicate okay how many unread emails do you have or how many ongoing things do you have. So maybe that's something we should th should have think about. But we'll we'll talk about that in the next video.